This is the Intuitive Leadership Mastery Podcast. What would it take for you to double your profits and half your stress with your intuition? Learn how with your host, Michael Light. So I'm here today with David Schneider, author of 8020 Investing, and I know you have a new book coming out, uh, David. What, what's the title of that? Um, the title is not decided yet. Um, it's uh, probably called Index Investing Fallacies, Ooh. and it's about uh, index fund investing. Okay. Um, uh, by the way, thank you very much for inviting me here today. So it's a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, no, happy to have you. It's been good knowing you uh, for about a year now. And, yes, that's right. It's know, almost two years. Two I years we met now. In, wow. I think in Barcelona. Did we meet in Barcelona? Or yeah. No, we, maybe. Maybe. Uh, yeah. So, so it's what I wanted. Hmm? What I wanted to talk about today was using intuition in your business. You know, both mm-hmm. in your investment business, but also as your work as an author. And, you know, I know you did a lot of research on investing for the 8020 investors, so maybe you have some That's insights right. into using intuition in investment as well. That's a very good question. It's a very complicated question. Um, there are several types of investors. And uh, from my research, what I've done, let's say 2,000 years back, all the successful investors used the intuition. That's for sure. Um, they had, of course, mathematical um, tools at the hand, depending on the, the period, uh, for example, Crustos uh, in, in the Roman Empire period or uh, the Rothschilds during the um, 18th century and the Warren Buffett uh, these days, uh, they all had their mathematical tools. Uh, but in terms of decision making, I mean, uh, investing is about making a bet on an uncertain future, mm. if you like it or not. Um, that sounds like what business uh, is, is as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, business is uh, a great part of business is making investment decisions where you res- uh, allocate your f- f- precious resources, such as your working capital, your t- precious time and so on. You have to make a decision. And uh, there's no way that you can't do that without intuition. So uh, it's a very good point. And, and my point of view that all the successful investors in the past used their intuition uh, as a major tool to make the important decisions in, in their life. So I, I yes. completely agree with you that it's key mm. to use intuition in, in mm. investment and in business. Um, I, I'm interested in why you think that's the case. Why, why can't you just do spreadsheets and figure out what to invest in? Or? Yeah, that would assume that through mathematical formulas that you already know <laughs> the future. And uh, as far as I know, uh, it might work for a certain period of time. I mean, the, the, for example, in my last book, I talked about quant investing and uh, this, uh, this, this, this group of investors are getting stronger and stronger. Uh, the problem is it only works as, as long as it works and then suddenly it doesn't. Uh, using mathematical formulas and then predicting the future and uh, it suddenly it doesn't and then they lose enormous amounts of money. For example, all the money uh, they have uh, gained over the last five years, they lose in one big major loss. Uh, a good example is long-term capital management. They used highly sophisticated mathematical formulas trying to predict the future based on probability theory and so on. Uh, it worked for a couple of years in a row uh, quite successfully and then suddenly it didn't and uh, they lost huge amounts of money. Billions. And they're almost billions, billions, and they brought uh, the U.S. financial system almost to the brink of collapse. And wow. that uh, the, f- the 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 coincidence is that was nineteen nine, what it was two thousand. No, wait, hold on, nineteen ninety eight and two thousand eight. Ten years later, it was then finally Neiman mm. finally succeeded in uh, uh, bringing the financial system down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so. Um, if you use a quantitative um, models, you assume that mathematics can predict the future, but that's not possible. So it means um, nobody knows the future, even uh, models programmed by humans, basically. They, they can't predict the future accurately all the time. That's impossible. Mm-hmm. The future is always uncertain per, per definition. So, so how, means, how does uh, intuition help? Um, it's a psychological component, my point, point of view. Um, a person who has no intuition, who has nothing to rely on, is 
is lost like a person who travels a complete new country and has no clue, doesn't speak the language, has never visited before. Mm. He's lost. But with intuition, you can somehow, uh, first of all, feel better about your decision. And second, you feel more confidence going forward. This this mm -hmm. first step and then the next step and so on. Uh, it's, it's vital. Mm. So it sort of like gives you a GPS for where you're going with your investing. Exactly. And in my point of view, it's a huge psychological advantage that you have your intuition. Mm. So I know you use your intuition in, in picking your investments. Are there any other famous investors who are known for mm. doing that? Um, as I said, all the famous investors, uh, all of my them. point of view, <laughs> yeah, uh, all the successful ones. Even even look at uh, look at George Soros. He's a speculator. He's a trader. Yeah. He bet against uh, the Bank of England. He, he I mean, he, he argues. Of course, he knew everything in in hindsight that would happen. But uh, uh, during that time where he was betting a billion dollars against uh, the Bank of England, I'm pretty sure he was also a little bit nervous. Mm. But his I think a major advantage he had it was his conviction and his conviction was based on his intuition that something was amiss in the financial system at least uh, in the currency mm -hmm. markets mm -hmm. he had no way of knowing that uh, he was right that it was certain but it mm -hmm. was a bet a good a well calculated bet uh, with a, a decisive fact of his own personal intuition now coming back to Warren Buffett is, is, is the same uh, he has this inner radar so to say well we can call it intuition uh, that tells him um, he should stay away, uh, don't touch it with a three-foot pole, or he should commit billions of dollars into a deal. Mm -hmm. Again, he, he 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 might be called the Omaha of uh, uh, of um, the Oracle of Omaha, but uh, even he makes mistakes. And uh, but I think his guiding guiding factor is his intuition, his personal intuition. Mm -hmm. Great. So, how, how, you know, can you share a bit about how you use your intuition, how you access that, if you're deciding what to invest in or whether to invest? That's a good question. And it's very difficult. It depends on the situation. It's, it's, uh, it's very, I mean, if I could explain it very easily, then I would probably write a book myself. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, it, it's a... If you if you deal with an uncertainty, you can only rely on what you have experienced before. Even if you have a fuzzy uh, memory, uh, your inner feeling whether it feels right or wrong, and uh, if a lot of money is on the line, then it it is vital to have something to back you up. Mm. Now, a lot of people use data and so on, but in the end, uh, all the data will not help you make that decision. Uh, because you take responsibility for it in the in the end, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so I you, use intuition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, uh, you, you, when you're looking at a, a potential investment, do you get a feeling in your stomach, or do you just get a knowing that it's going to be good, or it might not be good? Or um, it's difficult to answer. I think uh, it's based on experience then. I need mm -hmm. to trust on my experience and whether mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit like smelling a, a ruse, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in the financial market is all about deception and so on. And, and sometimes you see the same similar patterns you have seen before and you can, mm -hmm. you can judge, uh, you can quickly judge whether this is, uh, this is real or this is not real. And it's based on experience and mm -hmm. experience I think is a main, major component in, in, in terms of developing a good intuition for it yeah I mean so, I, I'll give yeah. you a, an example I've had last year there was a, a private investment uh, it was a bridge mm -hmm. loan for a company mm -hmm. and they were going to yes. pay uh, you know a 30% interest rate per annum it, you know, yes. 15% for, for six months and on paper you know it was the perfect investment you're gonna we, I'd have made 15% in six months it was all you know protected mm -hmm. by different levels of collateral you know if if they screwed mm -hmm. up and they didn't, they were supposed to, you know, they were getting another series of funding. And even if they didn't get that, you know, they could pay back the money. But I listened to the yes. teleconference with the CEO and his legal advisor, and it just yeah. something felt off, you know, it just yeah. didn't feel yeah. right. So I didn't invest. Some of my friends did invest. Yeah. <clears throat> Unfortunately, they, they the, the thing went bankrupt and, and all mm. the protections didn't work out. 
And I just yeah, knew yeah. there was something wrong with it. So I didn't. Yes, yes, I, yes. I could have succumbed to my greed. And that's one of the things yes. that, that happens in investing. You know, people often yes. get kept away with the greed. Exactly. And they don't even listen to the intuition. Right? Yeah. They completely ignore, some call it common sense sometimes, right? Uh, they ignore it completely. As, as, yeah, these are, these, are these, these powerful cognitive biases, which I mentioned also in my last book. Um, they, they, they re, uh, that reminds me of a good example I think Malcolm Gladwell had in his book uh, Blink, mm. uh, where there was a similar case of um, art fraud. Basically, there oh, was yes. a, Yeah, do you remember? Yeah, yeah I just Greek, reread uh, that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, tell us about a, that. Yeah, well, uh, I read the, the book a couple of years ago, but uh, as far as I remember, it was um, an art dealer who offered a very rare for, uh, a sculpture. Mm -hmm. And uh, a famous museum, I think it was the Getty Museum, uh, was interested in it. And, and they uh, they hired a couple of consultants and uh, and experts on that. No? And yeah. then the techni more the technical experts, they said, yeah, that's, uh, that's an authentic uh, statue. Uh, you should buy it, right? But then the people, the the old-fashioned people, the uh, the people with uh, decades of experience, they said something is wrong with that thing. I mm -hmm. can't tell, I can't put my finger on it. But there's something is wrong. You should be a little bit more cautious and do more research. Mm -hmm. And at the end, um, the people with this decades of experience, they were right. It was a it was a fraud. It was fake, basically, mm -hmm. right? And they couldn't uh, they couldn't exactly say pinpoint where that fraud was, but uh, they had that inner feeling, this this blink. They saw it, and it was the blink, and they saw it. This is not. Let's let's call it kosher. It was not kosher. It was not a kosher deal, right? So, right. And I think, yeah, that's uh, that's part of this intuition. It's very, very, um, an exciting topic, a very interesting topic. Mm. Yes. yes. Yeah, I mean, in that case with the museum, yeah. that was a statue that had been sold for millions of dollars. So. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. And, <laughs> and almost, all the paperwork uh, looked correct, and all the yeah, experts yeah. said, "Yeah, this is all real. This is an amazing discovery." But really, yes, it was yes. a fake. <laughs> yes, and and they should have trusted that expert from the very beginning, right? So this blink moment, yeah. and I think I think that's part of what you call probably to intuition, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's accessing your intuition there, uh, and the same thing with making investments. You know, I yes, yes, I can tell that there's something you know, write about an investment for me or that there's something wrong and I shouldn't be going into it. And it's so easy to get carried away with the details they give you on investments. Yeah, yeah, totally agree with you. Um, I remember you told me when we met last time that you are a mathematician uh, by training. And you might have heard that uh, a, a group of hedge funds, these quants, these algo traders and so on, um, who have autonomous trading, uh, artificial intelligence trading. How do you feel about this? I mean, they basically claim they know the future. They Well, they, they recognize patterns in the current yeah. trading yeah. you know, minute. I was going to say trading day, but really they're not yeah. looking through the whole day. They're just looking at... No, milliseconds like probing, Yeah, milliseconds. They're probing into, they put out price bids and then they see how other people react. And then they, yes, 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 they, yes, yes. And they yes, close yes. their positions out in seconds. So, you know, yeah. they don't leave them open very long. So, um, but they work without any kind of human intuition, I would say, right? Yeah, they're, they're using an algorithm um, mm. and whatever learning they put into it. To, yeah, to yeah, extract yeah. small value from the market in short time yes. periods, and and really the reason that, that they can work is that humans can't, you know, deal in milliseconds for trading typically. <laughs> so they're extracting value right, out yeah. that people yeah. weren't getting to before. Yes. Um, but yeah, they're not. They can be. They can go in a wrong direction. And as you said, there was that, there have been several examples where yeah. they were making money for for a while, for a few years, um, and then yeah. some unexpected black swan event happens. And <laughs> yes, 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 they're yes. just screwed. Or, or there's mm. like a problem with the algorithm, and they, you know, they all follow each other down, selling off stocks, losing money, yes. Yes, um, yes, and yes, not yes. realizing what's going on. Yeah. So it's very, it is very interesting to see that and how that mm -hmm. compares to, you know, the, how a human investor uh, reacts to a, to a situation. Yeah, totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, in some ways, in, in investing in the market, it's, it's sort of like warfare conducted in an electronic and money environment. You know? Yeah, it's true. Uh, as I said last time, um, it has become a huge casino, and in a casino, um, it is 
kind of zero-sum game, right? So the stronger player wins against the weaker player. And in computer trading nowadays, the, the, the person with the best algo, with the fastest ex execution, mm -hmm. will ultimately win, and the, the rest will lose or will pay the winner, basically. Right? Yeah, that's uh, typically quite what a little bit discomforting, right? Yeah, um, and you know, it's still possible to, to make money investing by yes, yes. you know ex both experience and, and intuition, and, and you know, you, it's still impo it look, important to look at the numbers as well. Uh, yeah, exactly. Of course, yeah. Um, I, I, w I would like to say that investing does not automatically mean stock markets, funds, and so on. Uh, investing means really uh, putting money into the future to, in order to gain something or get something back in return. And that does not have to be necessarily in stocks or bonds or, or mutual funds or something like this. I, I think, uh, especially as you know, uh, as you also know, uh, the DC community, I think there's a bunch of really great investors because they invest in their own businesses and they have been mm -hmm. As far as I can tell, they're very successful so far, and they would beat any index fund any day, I would say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, often. <laughs> May I say you, so? <laughs> yes. Well, often if you have your own business, that's a much better investment um, yes, than yes. Any, any fund you might put your money in. Though, mm. you know, it still may make sense to invest in other things just to diversify uh, exactly. your holdings. Because yeah. otherwise, you've got everything in one company, which, you know, things. Mm don't go well or the market changes, that may not be so good. Yes. May I uh, uh, say something in this regard? Uh, diversification, I'm all for diversification, uh, currency in, in, between, in currencies or in asset classes and so on. I just want to say that um, people are misunder misunderstand my point of view, uh, uh, diversification. They say, okay, mm -hmm. I'm, I have uh, $100 today and I need to diversify it today. And I think that's the wrong approach. You need mm. diversify over time and not mm. at the same moment at the same time. For example, let's say you have $100 and you say, okay, I'll put 13 stocks, 13 bonds, and 13 real estate, right? Mm -hmm. But in this in this decision, who's, they who's never taking consult. The, who's taking the other yeah. 10 there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they do not even consider whether they uh, overpay for this oh, asset class. Or, right. You understand, yeah? Yeah. Um, rather than waiting, okay, uh, at the moment I'll today today let's say uh, stocks are cheap uh, I yeah. buy stocks um, but I'll re keep the rest uh, uh, I keep the rest in, in cash or gold or whatever liquid assets and when real estate becomes cheap I will buy then I commit 30% of my portfolio then right? mm. so uh, I think that is the more well. appropriate exactly you make uh, uh, use of the time and basically you make use what the market offers you and mm -hmm. not the other way around right so that is right. very important no, that, that makes sense. So mm. I, I know you've written several books, David. Mm. You know, yes. how, how did how did that how did your intuition come into play in, in your writing? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I always wanted first I always wanted to write book, books mm. and uh, I got this inspiration. it was not intuition, but I got this this inspiration through the D C community where we are both members in, right? And uh, they encouraged me to buy to write a book and uh, uh, I always had role models like Jim Rogers or Mark Mobius. Mobius, uh, have you heard about Mark Mobius? He's one of the most famous emerging market investors. Mm. And um, uh, I got this inspiration and I decided to, to write the books. And uh, my intuition is, of course, to rely on the things I know best. Of course, I'm not writing about, let's say, motivation or sports fitness or diet and so on because I have no background and experience in this. But I know something about investing. And um, and bef these books I've written are actually not, not the, the future books I really intend to write. I want to write investment books about uh, emerging markets. Uh, for example, I go to Iran for three months and three weeks, excuse me, um, and study the country and uh, look out for investment opportunities along the line. Um, I, th I consider these books I've written so far as a base library for my readers, so to say, to understand what investing really is. Mm -hmm. And um, the intuition helped me, of course, to stay on the right path and, mm -hmm. and uh, not to write strange books you can find on the Amazon Kindle nowadays where you have you buy a book for three dollars and what you all what you get is 20 pages <laughs> and uh, then probably a lot of opt-ins and the kind of disclaimer text and so on right yeah no, no. so uh, I think intuition is also part uh, guidance doing the right thing I guess right mm -hmm. at least what you think is good for you so how, how do you access your intuition you, you know 
he uh, gave the example of <laughs> oh that's yeah that's uh, um, usually through contemplating usually mm. through thinking right mm. uh, and that is a luxury a lot of people nowadays don't have uh, people all people want to write books but if you write a book you need to think uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you need to have ideas and if you don't have the time or not the energy to think then it's really difficult to write actually a book in my mm -hmm. point of view mm -hmm. now that means um, I use the intuition to first of all I, I need to relax I need to take a walk do some sports and then relax after this and then I I enter a, a kind of yeah you could uh, almost call it a kind of spiritual moment where I think about the things I've experienced, uh, the, the books I've read, uh, I've read, and so on. And it's all part of this intuition then, which guides me then in my book writing process. Mm. And it's, uh, that is also in my investment process too. It's mm -hmm. the same. Right? You need time to contemplate. And I, I think, uh, if I remember, remember correctly, it was Mark Aurel, the famous Roman emperor, who said, uh, you don't need to read so many books, you just need to read a couple of books. What is much more important is the time to contemplate mm -hmm. about these books, right? Mm. Uh, and, right? And uh, I, I, and you you have that too, I guess, or a lot mm -hmm. of DC members have this, this luxury of having the time to contemplate about, so uh, you, uh, about matters. Hmm? For, for you, and I think that's this is true for me too, getting to a mm. quiet state, Going, going mm. for a walk, doing mm. something to get out of my busy mind helps. That's me right. Yes. Mm. Yeah, my intuition better. Mm. And yes. Is, yes. Are you one of the people who you actually hear words in your head, or do you get you get a knowing, or do you get you notice things in your body, or? Mm, that is, uh, I haven't had, uh, I haven't thought about this yet. Um, but I would guess uh, more words. I'm, I'm more, uh, you know, there are different types of people, if, if I can say so, that I'm more and more a person who uh, feels uh, inspired by, by sound. So it's probably not even visual, it's a sound actually for me, at least. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's probably more words which appear in my head. Mm. Yeah, but it's difficult to say. I'm not a scientist, of course, in this. And it could be a, a mixture of sounds and visual images I created through reading books or something like this. Yeah, uh, I'm not. I, it's a very complex chemical process, I would say. But uh, I would say uh, probably from my instinct is probably uh, words in my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. The, you sound, know, we, we, the sound of the language. There are many. Different the amazing thing. Yeah, the amazing thing. I'm a native German speaker, right? It doesn't mm. even happen in my native German language, but it happens in English actually. Oh wow, that's quite a, that's quite interesting, isn't it? Right. I mean, you know, people get their intuitive information in different ways. Some people get words. Some people get images. Some yes, people just yes. get a knowing. Some people that things happen in their body, like George yeah. Soros, famous invest, billionaire investor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, apparently, when he, when he gets a backache, yes. he, he knows it's time to to sell the position. That's his. That's his <laughs> one of his uh, methods. Oh yes, I I would like to have his bag. <laughs> uh, there you go. Yes, to know <laughs> they should preserve his bag. Yes. I mean, that's one half of of making money with investments, mm. knowing when to sell. The other half, of course, is knowing when to buy. Um, um, unfortunately, I don't have that. I don't have this physical reaction. Mm. No. Mm. But you, I you, guess many genius people might have that. <laughs> well, you know, we all access mm. our intuition different ways. Mm. There's no mm. one mm. right way to do it. Um, yes. So, you know, that's good. And then what about, you know, you have an investment business. Um, yes. So how do you use intuition in there? Uh, it's uh, complicated now. Um, the good thing is I manage only my, my own money. That's a good thing. Mm. Uh, so I am not owing any marketing explanation to my investors these days. <laughs> but before that, I could not have said that that it's based on my intuition. I can, mm. No investor who sells a fund or a product can can tell so. Uh, I think uh, the investors would flee like uh, cockroaches when the lights are switched on. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's true. But nowadays, it's about a systematic process. Uh, a mathematical approach so that uh, the uh, the uh, unpredictable components are erased as much as possible right 
Now, but uh, as I said before, in especially the successful investors in the past uh, always use the intuition, and so do I. And um, uh, again, it's a, it's a matter of experience and what you have seen and experienced before, whether through reading or through my own experience. Look, I've been in the business since um, 1994. Yeah. Mm. Uh, when the, 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 the bond crisis happened in the, during that year and then I think Mexico bond crisis was also uh, at the same time caused another bond crisis in the world, a global bond crisis. Um, 1995 was a good year uh, even though there was um, uh, the earthquake in, in Japan. Uh, that was, I think it's called the Kobe earthquake, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, in these, I have a lot of experience. I've seen the different market reactions so it's part of my intuition now. Mm. I've, I've, I've seen the Asian crisis 1997, I, I've seen LTCM blowing up in 1998 and then uh, the Russian default crisis and so on. Mm. Uh, it, it helps enormously to see the market reactions and what mm -hmm. the headlines, I, I can still remember the headlines, the similar headlines we, we have seen today. The, 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 the headlines don't change actually in a way, <laughs> just the location change. So uh, a person with experience real life experience, I think, has an enormous advantage in building this intuition. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, it gives you a better way mm -hmm. to, to understand the information. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes, I yes, think yes, that yes. is true. And, you know, maybe the intuition in that case is mm -hmm. kind of rolling up years of experience and, and giving you the information in a quick form. Yes, 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 exactly. Uh, because in the end, we, we have to make decisions, right? And, and yeah, uh, investing uh, in a business, it all comes down to the uh, decisions you make. Yes, <laughs> mm. and sometimes we have to make lightning fast decisions. Right? Mm. What's an example of a lightning fast decision you've made last year? Oh, that's few years? Uh, very easy. For, I remember uh, two, uh, excuse me, 2008 when Lehman collapsed. The first mm. thing what we did is, uh, and that's uh, that's almost like an instinct. You short index funds. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing what you do is uh, you panic, you don't know what's happening, so you need to hedge your positions, your long positions, of course. And mm -hmm. the first thing what you do is uh, push the sell button, but you're not selling your own position because you're not sure what's happening to your own position. What you do is uh, you 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 short some a, sur a surrogate, right? Something which is close, which is uh, liquid, and which is enormously and big. And these are usually uh, index futures, index options, and so on, right? Mm -hmm. And you sell the heck out of it as fast as quick as possible. Mm. Now the losers, on the other hand, are the index holders, <laughs> because they're not fast enough to react to this situation. But every modern trader does. If there's some block, black swan event, what the first thing they do is uh, have the uh, finger on the sell button on index funds and uh, sorry, index futures and uh, index options. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the first thing. That's an intuition. Yeah, you don't know what's going on. Uh, and uh, it's just bad. The markets are going down. You need to hedge your positions. You mm -hmm. sell. You right. sell futures. That's right. Great. So, uh, what are, do you hire staff in your business, or no? Uh, I have a, I have a, let's say, a mastermind meet at work. I, I have. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, virtual, uh, uh, how do you call them? Uh, virtual uh, assistant. Uh, yeah, virtual assistants and so on. But uh, most of the th things, uh, I'm completely independent now. Yeah. Uh, so do you use your intuition in terms of when, investing? Yeah. No, it makes sense. So do you use your intuition when you're you're hiring a virtual assistant or? Uh, <laughs> I, I think so. Um, sometimes you rely on recommendations, right? You ask mm -hmm. about uh, which one you should say. And then uh, I guess, again, yeah, it's your instinct. Uh, in a way, uh, you have to make that decision uh, instantly. And uh, there's no way that uh, the, the best reference or the best CV is, uh, will protect you. In the end, it's your, it's your decision, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you hire a virtual uh, assistant, uh, is not as let's say, risky as hiring a long-term partner, mm. uh, which commits capital or you have to commit capital in this partnership. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the decision process is slightly different. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be quicker. If this is a virtual assistant doesn't work out, you just fire fire this person. Right. Whereas if you have, a, have an investment or business partner, it's a much right. slower process to disengage. 
exactly yeah and uh, well that gets then back to marriage too <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you want to date a little bit before you get into the wedding contract right yeah the marriage contract sorry <laughs> so have you, have you had experience you know seeing other people get into partnerships where it, you know they didn't pay attention to their intuition and, and it didn't work out or or have you done that so yes yes and uh, quite fairly i don't want to even talk about this on this podcast right now but i have my fair share of uh, terrible experiences uh, and uh, i have to say uh, so no no need to go into details or name any names but did, yeah. did you have any inkling you know early on that yeah this was not a good idea yeah, I should have seen it coming before, but again, I didn't. I, I ignored my intuition or in, to be ignored my instincts, mm. and uh, then it. Uh, I, I maybe it was greed. Maybe it was the mm -hmm. excitement uh, that surrounded my decision, mm -hmm. but uh, it was against my instincts. Mm. And a lot of people, when when I talked to my family or my friends at that time, they said, "Why did you do this?" It's, it is against your instincts, right? Mm. Um, so yeah, this is a kind of cognitive bias we have talked, we mentioned earlier. Right? So, so it, it actually pays dividends to listen to your intuition when you know doing a partnership. Of course, I mean it's not a fail-safe, but it's definitely something it has developed over probably thousands of years for humans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, um, we should definitely listen to it, right? Yeah, but no, uh, I, I think I think it's important people listen mm -hmm. to it more. You know, I, mm -hmm. it's so easy to ignore it. Um, yeah, yeah. And, yes. you know, I, certainly in the United States, um, and I think all Western countries, people are trained to ignore it, you know, in school or, or you know, when they're working mm -hmm. in their mm -hmm. first job. Mm -hmm. Then, like, mm -hmm. you've got to produce the numbers to prove what you're doing and ignore any mm -hmm. feelings you have. Um, that's a good point. That uh, that is a good point. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's how society or the industrial age has developed, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, right. And there's no, there's no, there's no way back. <laughs> well, uh, it, I, I'm not saying throw out that rational thought. Mm, just like yeah. let's add in this extra tool yeah. um, to make running business less stressful and to be able to make decisions and investments, you know, faster. Yeah. Yeah, you, you see that the rational systems are easier to teach, right? That these are models, these are mental models, and so on, and they're enormously mm -hmm. helpful. Uh, intuition is, 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 is less tangible, of course, yes. right? Uh, and requires probably the right mo role models to mm -hmm. develop good intuitions. Probably requires. And again, I'm not an expert on this. It's, uh, of course, it's a, it's it's a mixture of instincts. We we also have to be careful that. Maybe we are fooled by our intuitions sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Which uh, could be uh, covered um, cognitive biases. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm also I'm also studying this right now as an investor. You need to study uh, cognitive biases. Uh, it's called behavioral finance and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we need to be careful. And so people are uh, probably it goes in waves. Uh, there are periods where people are very distrustful of uh, intuition, and then they are, they reemerge. Mm -hmm. And then it changes again back towards you know more rational thinking. I think these are periods in human time. I think we need a healthy balance. We need a healthy bias, and we need to use all the tools available in decision making, right? Yeah. No. I. I it's just a tool. So. It's, mm, yeah. Um, yeah. As is analyzing numbers, it's just a tool. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, yes, yes. But you know, let's use all of them together. Yes, so, yes. you you mentioned. Being able to tell the difference between cognitive bias and intuition, yeah. how, how do you yeah. do that? Uh, I'm, I'm just I'm studying it. I'm not a I'm not an expert in this, but uh, I have been studying it for quite a while. And uh, I give you a quick example. Um, if you you've studied finance, you you might have to study also contracts, con artists, and mm. so on. And uh, they make use of these human cognitive biases by appealing to the softer, emo, um, how do you call it? Yeah, biases, whether it is greed, fear, uh, gullibility, and so on. And they have mastered the, the game, right?
Mm. Uh, scams are a good, a good example. In, in finance, uh, it's, mm. it's a wonderful area where it is highly rewarded. If you're a good con artist, it's highly rewarded, of course. Mm. And, uh, are they, these con artists working in merchant banks? or? <laughs> Uh, well, I don't want to get sued by them, but you can't actually call them con artists. But in the end, yes, they have elaborate sales schemes, of course, right? Mm. Uh, and you might have read uh, Influence by Caldiani, it's a very famous um, author. Uh, no, I, called, haven't, I, think. I haven't seen that one. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's quite an old uh, print out now. Mm -hmm. And uh, he talks about... Uh, some very powerful sales techniques which appeal to cognitive biases, of course, in order to improve sales in, in various industries, right? Mm -hmm. Very, very uh, good book. I highly recommend. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to reread it uh, again. And uh, let me quickly Google it for you. Uh, yeah, Influenced by Chialdini, I think. Mm. And uh, highly recommended Robert Chialdini. Uh, it's called, the full title is called The Psychology of Persuasion. Yeah, influence the psychology of persuasion. I highly recommend this book. Anyway, so in finance, um, look, it's it's a big business, right? Um, and sales drives the, the the bonus pools and so on. So that means they have studied all the fine arts of uh, sales techniques, including the uh, the, the aspects uh, Mr. Chialdini describes in his book Influence. Um, so. Then it goes into uh, cognitive biases. In, in order to maximize your sales, you appeal to cognitive biases of people, whether it is um, greed, whether it is, uh, let's say, uh, the, 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 the grass is always greener uh, at your neighbors, so you need to compete with your, your na uh, neighbors and so on, right? So mm -hmm. salespeople have very interesting techniques to appeal to your cognitive biases. Um, whereas I think that I uh, instinct, or in your, in your case, I intuition, can protect you against these things, mm -hmm. right? So where it says, well, wait a minute, uh, is that really necessary? Wait a minute, that doesn't feel right, right? But these cognitive biases are so powerful, especially if you have one or two or three cognitive biases working towards so just, one direction. Just to, just to clarify for people, a cognitive yeah. bias here is some yeah. deeply held belief that you have that makes you bl have a blind spot to what's going on. Is that right or is it something different? <laughs> Um, it's more complex than uh, than this. Um, uh, according uh, according to a, a definition, let me uh, let me quickly f uh, have a look at cognitive biases. Is human misjudgments? We can call them human misjudgments, right? Mm. Um, but it's more than an individual misjudgment. It's that you're misjudging a whole class of things. That's a good question. I think, um, again, I'm not an expert on this, but I feel that cognitive, uh, it can apply to the individual as well as the group. For example, uh, look at uh, uh, Nazi Germany. It applied to the whole population, mm -hmm. right? It was a complete... Complete brainwashing. Human mis uh, brainwashing. And uh, we are not talking about uh, the uneducated worker. It was mm -hmm. the educated German elite, which was brainwashed, mm -hmm. and there was a cognitive biases, uh, uh, mismanipulation at the finest level, of course, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, that's in some sense what happens in a bull market before it turns yes. to a bear. Everyone thinks it can only go up, mm -hmm. and they have a cognitive bias that, yeah, it's, I need yeah. to invest because I'm going to lose out if I don't invest. Exactly, exactly. And uh, these people in uh, at Wall Street, they know this, of course, and they appeal mm -hmm. to these uh, uh, these cognitive biases, right? Mm -hmm. And they represent themselves as an authority, which is also, uh, you know, the um, you you make easier misjudgments if you trust people with authority, of course, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which you can see in Nazi Germany or in uh, at Wall Street, uh, they they present their university degrees there. Uh, their, 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 their brand names. I work for Goldman Sachs. I have uh, 10 years of uh, work experience and I come from Harvard University. It makes an impression on you. Mm -hmm. If you are a working class person or middle income, uh, you belong to the middle class and you are concerned about your retirement and so on, right? You, you mm -hmm. follow those uh, experts. They, they should know, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, they forgot then, and that is the, the misjudgment here, the human misjudgment is that they are not actually working for you, but they're working for their own financial incentives, which are substantial, right? Mm. 
Now, I don't want to say against something against Goldman Sachs here, but it's it's just a good, very good example of it, <laughs> mm. of, uh, representative of the entire industry. Mm -hmm. yes. So, how do you get around cognitive bias? <sighs> yeah, it's a combination of having rational thought processes in place. Um, mental model, so to say. Uh, and the easiest example of a mental model is probably a checklist. Mm. Yeah? Uh, a checklist is a wonderful little tool where you mm -hmm. can say, uh, like, uh, you go through the list one by one, take your time and think about it. And mm -hmm. if this uh, checklist strongly urges you actually to stay away from this, for example, investment idea you get presented by a, a smooth-talking salesperson, then you mm -hmm. should follow this, uh, this list. Uh, it's all about risk reduction then anyway, right? Mm. Um, mathematics, of course, helps you. For example, if you buy real estate, uh, real estate investing is not that difficult if you follow simple mathematical tools you mm -hmm. have available as a real estate investor. It's really not that difficult. Right? Mm -hmm. If the numbers fit, um, then it's a good investment. If the numbers fit, don't fit, and you have uh, you have used this checklist in, in real estate investment, then it's probably uh, a bad investment, right? Um, mm -hmm. If there's fraud involved, there's nothing you can uh, you can do. If someone sells you uh, a dot, yeah. If someone sells you contam contaminated land, mm -hmm. there's nothing you can do, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, except that you need to be probably more vigorous in your in your due diligence. Mm -hmm. you see what I mean, right? Um, so simple mental models definitely help you avoid cognitive biases. Mm -hmm. And I think in, in uh, coming towards your topic of intuition, I think you need to listen to your intuition too, especially if it is in, in directions towards risk aversion, risk uh, m m making decisions that could harm you actually. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, because then if, you, if you've got this kind of gut feeling that there's something mm. not right about, about yeah, it, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. You know, it's good to dig into the numbers or do more due diligence or, or just say yeah, no yeah. to the deal. You know, there's many more yeah, yeah. deals out there. Yeah. I mean, I, I say uh, the same thing when hiring people. Yeah. If you have yeah. any doubt about whether this person's going to be a good fit, if it's not a hell yes yeah. decision, yeah. Yes, yes, move yes, off yes. and look for someone else. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just to end this example here, I have a wonderful example which I uh, read a couple of years back. It's a German fighter pilot in the Second World War. Yeah, he was the mm. most decorated and most uh, successful fighter pilot uh, ever in the history of fighter pilots. I think he had over, over 300 downs. Anyway, um, over the years he developed this intuition of he knew when there was an enemy plane approaching. He knew it. Mm. Now. He said, okay, nine o'clock, there are, might be fighter pilots, right? And mm -hmm. uh, his squadron uh, looked into that direction, nine o'clock, and they couldn't see anything, right? The human mm -hmm. eye could not detect anything. It was impossible. Mm -hmm. And he had excellent eyesight, of course, but not uh, uh, but not robot eyes or in human eyes, it was just normal eyesight. But it was amazing how many times he was correct. He, he correctly anticipated the f enemy fighter pilots in this car coming from that direction. Mm -hmm. And people said it was his intuition, right? Right, and you can. Uh, I think he didn't develop just by by um, uh, by uh, by talent or by God given yeah talent. Uh, he developed it over the many years of uh, flying uh, mm -hmm. sorties, so to say. It's right. a, a it's a it's a wonderful example for for having developing this intuition. Yeah, and I, I think that's true in business too. Mm. You know, some people will come, you know, mm. are born with better intuition, and mm. you know, other people can develop their intuition. To be just mm. as good or better, yes, no matter yes, of what yes, we yes, focus yes. on. So, yeah. Um, I guess we need to develop both. We need to develop our intuition as a backup system, and we need to make use of very easy mental models, such as, for example, a checklist model, right? Or using mm -hmm. simple algebra, uh, simple mathematical uh, models, right? Which then can back us up in our decision making, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. No, have, have both of them. Was this Eric? Yes. This, this guy's name was Eric uh, Hartman, or that's right, that's right, Eric Hartman. Yeah, that's right. A wonderful book, actually. Oh. Highly recommended to. You. Great. Well, anything else you want to say about uh, intuition and business and investing? <laughs> uh, um, I want to say that 
business is kind is uh, is the ultimate form of investing. If you establish your own business, if you if you develop your business, you grow your business. It's the ultimate investment, right? Mm. And in my point of view, it can be, or it usually is, the best investment you can ever make. Mm-hmm. Now, it does not mean it's for everybody, but uh, in my point of view, a lot of people can can establish businesses. It doesn't have to be a Fortune 500 business, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it can be a small family business, and if you if you do it within the family, people can help you within mm-hmm. the family. And and over, I mean, I've studied the, the history of investing. Uh, most successful investment operations were actually family business operations, right? Which then were passed on to generation. But a good example is the Rothschilds, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, which created the banking dynasty. Um, yes, and intuition will definitely help you. Mm-hmm. And if you get educated and if you are always having an open mind to develop uh, new mental models, develop your intuition, then I think uh, everybody can be in his own right, uh, be a, a fairly successful investor and entrepreneur. Mm. Well, the Rothschilds were incredibly successful and still are. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so that's inspirational. So, yeah, I like that, the way you phrase that. Uh, think of mm. developing your intuition as an investment mm. in your mm. uh, skills for your business and your investments. Yes. One of the things I do in that is keep a decision journal. So, like, if I decide to invest or not invest, I, I make a note of, you know, what my decision process was. Oh, yeah, that's, then, a, that's a wonderful, wonderful idea, yes. Yeah, it's a bit like, um, uh, what do they call it, paper investing, where you don't actually put your yeah. money in, you try out your different methods and see what, what mm-hmm. works. But yeah. you could do it for on real investments and, and things you didn't pull the trigger on. Uh, and then yeah, look yeah. back. As a matter of fact, I do something similar for each investment mm. I do. I usually write something up, a one pager. I usually mm-hmm. write something up either mm. for something to invest or for later to grab, to have uh, something of maybe I might invest at a later stage or something like this. Uh, but it, it, it gives me a very good uh, uh, a piece of time, uh, a piece of to, to, to remember and to, to go, go get back to. I think it's a, mm. I think it's a great idea to have something like this. Yeah. Great. Well, it's been wonderful talking with you, David. I'll look forward to seeing your new book come out. Yes, and, thank you very um, much, Michael. How would people find you if they were interested in learning more about you? Um, they should uh, visit nomadicinvestor.com. Uh, this is my main website, and uh, I publish my reports uh, on this website. And as I said, I want to become an emerging market expert. So I will travel a lot of emerging markets and write about investment opportunities in these countries. Um, yeah, and uh, if they're, they're interested in my uh, investors educational uh, in investors education books, then they can also find it on my website. Great. Nomadicinvestor.com. Nomadicinvestor.com. Well, thanks mm. so much. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much, Michael, and I see you at the next meeting, I guess. Yep, sure will. Have a good, have a good time in Chiang Mai. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. Get strategies and show notes at intuitiveleadershipmastery.com. What would it take to see you here next time on the Intuitive Leadership Mastery Podcast?